Hi there, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com, and in this video, I'll be showing you my process for creating sci-fi gun sound effects from scratch. Um, so I'll be showing you everything that I do right from the beginning where I'm designing my own samples to importing them into a sampler, uh, adding effects and everything from scratch. I actually don't have anything planned for this video yet, so you're going to see me in my creative process, and hopefully you find that valuable and helpful. Uh, if you're new here, uh, like I said before, my name is David, and I'm a video game sound designer. If you are also a sound designer, I have a free little gift for you. It is my five layering techniques guide. It's a little guide that I put together, a PDF guide uh, showing five different layering techniques that I use, and I've seen other professional sound designers use uh, to create sound effects. So if you want to create better sound effects, um, then you can pick that up. It'll be absolutely free. The link will be in the description below. All right, let's get into our project. All right, so for this video, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to split it up into three different sections. Uh, so the first section is going to be uh, creating our uh, samples from scratch. So the way I like to create my uh, sci-fi gun shot sound effects is um, either one is like purely synthesis, which is one way. And if you want to see how to do that, I actually made a video about it, and I'll link it up in the cards above, uh, top right. And uh, the other way that I prefer to do it, because uh, I find I have a lot more flexibility and there's a lot more... Uh, sound and textures and different things you can do with it. And, and the way that I like to create it is using your own samples. So I'm going to be creating my own samples and I'll show you how I do that right now. So we're going to start with that. After that, uh, the second part will be actually importing it into a sampler and designing it. I'm going to be using Faceplant for that. If you don't have Faceplant, that's totally fine. You can actually uh, follow along uh, using other samplers. I just really like Faceplant because I, I know it really well and because it's super powerful and flexible. So um, if you don't have it, I highly recommend it. But if you don't, that's totally fine. You can still follow along. And then finally, the last part is going to be like adding effects, um, adding filters and other things that I like to add to my gun sound effects to uh, kind of beef, beef them up a little bit and stuff like that. So those are going to be the three main sections. So let's get started. So uh, like I said before, the first thing I like to do before I even start thinking uh, or, or like actually designing the shot is to create my own samples. And what do I mean by that? So uh, by that, I mean, I want to I want to have some sort of file that I can use to have to design my gunshot. So instead of actually using like real gunshot samples, um, which can be kind of boring um, or kind of like overly used or just too too common, like like we all know what a gun sounds like. Um, but if you want to be a bit more creative, then what I like to do is um, to design stuff from scratch. So what I do is I'll start with, again, I'm going to use Faceplant for this part. You can use any synth actually for, for here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to use Faceplant, like I said, uh, I'm going to load up a, a pure just sine wave, right? Nothing special here. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a few um, effects. So this is the part that where you want to get a little bit creative. So because you have just a plain sine wave, um, the next part that I want to do is add some effects to it and then modulate those effects uh, to create some cool sounds. So if, if I'm thinking about this, I might think about like what kind of effects I want to use. Do I want some sort of glitchy effects? Then maybe I'll use some sort of, uh, like if I want a glitchy kind of gunshot, then I might use some sort of glitch effects. If I want some sort of like bassy, uh, like low sounds, uh, I might play low on my keyboard, on my sine wave, and then also add some like really bassy um, like effects, like a sub synth or something like that. Um, but for now, I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick some other effects here that I have um, that I know uh, I like. So one of them is going to be, uh, I think it was Fracture XT. Uh, there we go. By Glitch Machine. I, I like this one just because it's super easy to um, to scan through presets and get these really cool textures, sounds. So I'm going to put the wet dry knob all the way up. And let me show you what that might sound like. Like you get this really cool sound. So what I do now is I'm just going to go here. I'm going to bring it to the beginning here. And I'm, I'm going to record these sounds. And I'm going to cycle through different presets here. I'm going to randomize the settings so that I get different sounds. So here we go.
All right, so this was a super simple example. Here I have it here, uh, all printed out. And what I might do is something like just normalize the file, which is already is, because it was already super loud and peaking up here. Uh, but yeah, so it's something like this. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna like do a lot of these. So I'm just gonna go through uh, some of my favorite uh, ones that I like to use. So for example, I really like to use Portal. So some effects that I really like, uh, yeah, I like, I like Portal. Uh, and what I like to do for Portal is I like to modulate these knobs here. So what I'd like to do is use the parameter modulation inside of Reaper. I just assign it to LFO. And then I can just print random like this. I don't I uh, yeah I normally like to have it in the center, like centered like this, so that it, it kind of stays around the center here. And that's about it. I'll leave it out at the speed that it's at. So like this and now it's just randomly going to move around. So it's randomly going to move up and down for this uh, setting. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, this other knob here. There you go. So now this is going to be like moving randomly about. And what I'd like to do is just pick like, because there's so many awesome presets, I can just pick a preset in here and it's probably going to sound really cool. So let's hear. And remember, this is all just a, a pure sine wave. Right, and then so I could use that. I like to layer mine with like usually one or two plugins. So I'm going to use Fracture uh, Fracture XT again, and let's see what I can get with this. Right, you can get these really cool sounds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the exact same thing here, and I'm just gonna record this, and we'll be right back. All right, so there you go. I have my second one uh, printed out down here. And uh, I'm probably going to do a few more. And again, the, the, the fun part of this is that you're just trying to be creative and come up with interesting sounds and textures. So um, like there's there's no kind of right or wrong way of doing this. It's just what, what kind of cool sounds can you create uh, using just a simple sine wave. And of course, you don't even have to use it just a sine wave. Like I could go and, and use whatever other kind of wave or I can load even a preset in here that I have. So there's a whole bunch of cool presets and I could, um, you, can, you can just load a preset and do the exact same thing, add those uh, effects and see what other kind of cool sounds you can get. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe try to load a preset in here. So let's let's load a cool like bass sound. So that's a cool bass sound. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing here, maybe with portal. And what you're hearing is I'm also playing like across the keyboard. So I have an 88 key keyboard, so I can play up and down on my keyboard to get different octaves and different sounds uh, that way. I'm gonna try a different plugin here. Let's try a, a free one so that, that people can actually see how to, uh, so you can see how, how this can work for you too. So so super massive. It's a free plugin. You can pick it up uh, from uh, valhaladsp.com. Uh, again, I'm gonna put the mix all the way up here. And uh, yeah, so let's try this. So I'm gonna do, Again, the same thing here. I'm going to do add some parameter modulation to the two main knobs here. And just like that. Same thing with this one here. LFO, center it. Okay. okay. All right, so here we go. So that sounds pretty cool to me. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to record it again, and we'll be back. All right, so there you have it. Uh, there is the third one. So um, what I like to do is come up with at least, you know, three or four or five of these because um, then I just have more to play with. I also really like like glitchy plugins. So I didn't really use too much of that. I, I mean, I use Fracture XT, but I, uh, there's also other ones that I like to use. So for example, uh, let me just show you a few so you can see here. Um, so one that I like is Tactics. So this is actually a um, sampler. Uh, a sequencer, so you can load your own samples and play out different sequences. So I like to use that, and then um, and then do the same thing here that I have here. Put on other effects and put those out and see what kind of sounds I can get. Uh, another one that's really awesome is Palindrome. Palindrome is really great to get some really cool granular textures. Uh, so that is really good. So 
Uh, those two are awesome. And then if I look at other plugins here, I like, uh, I mean, anything by like Glitch Machines is like really good. So um, yeah, so there you go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna export these three and then we'll come back and we'll uh, start actually designing the gunshot. All right, so we are back. So what I'm gonna do now is open a new instance of Faceplant. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just load a sampler in here. And then I'm just gonna put in one of the sounds that we just created that I just exported here. And I'm gonna put that in here. There you go. So now if we play it. Right, so this is the um, third uh, file that I, I created and it's right here. So, uh, so I'm gonna leave that there for now. And uh, the first thing that I'd normally do is load an LFO and I'll put this at unipolar like this. So that way it's all going in one direction and I do one shot. And what this is gonna be is that I'm actually gonna set this to my pitch of the file. So this is gonna be um, uh, doing the, the actual gunshot, the, the transient of the file of, of the shot. So what I like to do is, um, I, I already created some presets, but if you wanna see how to create these, you can just go edit here and you can create your own uh, LFO presets. So um, what I like to do is just have like sounds that like, uh, or sorry, an LFO that just that just comes really fast down in pitch. And then uh, you can do that once or twice. So if I wanted to, I could probably like delete this like this and probably just have it like something like that, like that. So I could probably use something like this and if I want, I could add some more points and then maybe I'll just show you some other ones that I have later, but something like that. And now if I play it, like you start to hear that laser sound, right? So that's how that works. Um, I can even do a bit more. And now what's great is I can just like, like as you're seeing, I can just quickly scan through the file and see like if there's a cool part in the file, that sounds good. And there's a few settings I like to use in terms of the envelope here. I, I normally like to put the release up to about 150. Something like that. And now I'm just gonna scan through the file and see if I can find some cool, cool spots. All right, so I came up with this one spot here that I think sounds cool. So I think I can work with that. So, um, I mean, if I wanted to, I could just use that or export that, but let's see what else we can do with it. So some other stuff that you can do is sometimes I like to just add some uh, FM synthesis. So by doing that, uh, you can just add another um, like wavetable outside of, of the group here. So you can see this wavetable is not going to the output. So it's outside of it. And now what I can do, so that, sorry. So basically that means that you're not gonna hear this, this wavetable here. You're not gonna hear this sound. So what I can do with it is I can use it to modulate the phase and that's gonna create some FM synthesis for us. So if I do it all the way. So that's way too much, but just so you hear what it's doing. So it generally, I find in terms of like sci-fi guns, I like to put it on uh, guns that are a lower in pitch. I think it sounds way better. If it's too high, it just sounds too. Um, it just sounds like it's breaking your ears or something. So, like around here sounds okay to me. If I ever want to take it off, I can just turn this off and I have my original sound here. Another uh, setting that I like to use is unison. So in here you have a lot of more settings that you can play with. Well, first of all, it just changes the sound right away. And then here you have your different kind of unison presets. So here you can do synthetic. So this is a like good for like classical like laser sounds. You can even increase the amount here. I think that this adds more more voices, if I'm not mistaken. So you can go up to eight voices. Right, so that sounds kind of cool. 
And yeah, so you can like play around with some of these. Usually I like to stick around with uh, either hard, smooth, or synthetic. And that's it. So next, what I'd like to do is, if I have something that I kind of like, is I might um, like see if I if I want to add some filters. So what's what's go cool about this is you can add a filter in uh, before it goes to the output. So you have a, a filter that's gonna so the sound's gonna go through the sample, and then it's gonna go through this filter. And with this filter, you can modulate it, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Again, I, I'm gonna use modulate it with this LFO that I'm using to modulate the pitch here. And so let's let's have a look at what we can do. So uh, there's a few that I like. So one is uh, this one here. I also like these, uh, actually just these last four ones. So let's let's start with this one. So this one's cool because uh, this is what it looks like, yeah, like that. I don't know what this filter is called. I should probably know. <laughs> but anyways, so um, you have this one here. And uh, what I like to do is I like to modulate all three of these parameters and you can get some really cool effects with that. So let's start by the cutoff being low and I might change this up. So already sounds pretty cool. So if I had no filter, sounds okay with this. Like it already sounds way better. Right, and now if I increase the Q here. A little too much. You probably don't even need it, but it could do that. Another thing that you could do is the gain, though I might not even need it again. So I kind of like it just like that. So I'm going to keep it like that. Uh, another thing uh, that I might like to use is a bit of distortion. And this I, I like to use to kind of um, uh, add distortion to the, um, the transient. So I'm just going to increase the drive a little bit here like this. Okay, so I can get some cool sounds like that. And then you can keep going with this, by the way. Like sometimes I'll add like three, four, five, six filters um, just to kind of play around with it. So let's see if 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 adding more can make it sound a little better. So uh, for this type of filter, if we look here, this is just like a, a, a peak filter. So I'm going to put this, uh, I like to normally have it around, uh, I don't know, but anywhere between like 5 and, and 10K, usually 5 and 8K. And I'll put this one. So what this does is it's just gonna bring out the, the the higher frequencies for the gunshot for the transient. So it's just a bit more punchy. So without it. I mean you could also do it probably for low frequency. So it sounds okay to me, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, let's see if we can have another one here, something like this. Let's see what happens if we use this one. And there you go. So now I have some sort of outline of a gun or a gunshot. I could probably either use that as a layer or as a starting point. And then, but what's cool about this is that there's so many things that we can change here. So the first thing I can change is I can go through and actually pick a different transient preset that I have here for my LFO. So if I go, let's say this one, 
now the gunshot's going to be different. If I do this one now. So that's what's really great about like faceplant is that I can just cycle through these uh, like what I what I created are my transient presets here, which are just different LFO settings, and I can just get like different kind of gunshot uh, sounds. So, also the other thing I can change is the LFO speed. So if I do it a lot faster, uh, let's say like this. It's going to sound different. Right? And then, so I can cycle through these. I can cycle through the speed. And then the other most obvious thing is I can cycle through my actual sound file here. And if there's something I don't like in there, what's cool is because I created multiple ones of these and they all have some different sounds and different textures because I use different plugins, I can just skip through it and choose a different sound file here and see what I get. So none of these, none of these are like super super sounds that great at least to my ears but this is kind of the process I would I, I would go through so uh, so another thing that I like to do is um, for the for these sounds here is I can actually loop it and I can actually reverse play through these so if I, I, I just click on the loop setting here and then I can go down here choose uh, to reverse now I can reverse the sounds so now I get different sounds so I have even more options of what's available here All right, so that's that one. Let's try another sound file here. Let's try. I'm going to turn off this filter because I find it a little bit easy. Maybe I'll try it without the FM. Synthesis. Maybe I'll try with smooth on. Let's try backwards again. Right? Maybe I want to switch up some of the filters I have here. Maybe turn this one off. Maybe I don't want any filter. Maybe I want to change the amount of LFO that is applying to the pitch. All right, so there's a lot that you can do with this, um, just like that. So let me show you some other um, effects or other ways that you can apply um, effects or think about your gunshots here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this first lane. And for this, you would need um, the plugin Slice EQ. 
And so this is actually something I learned from uh, someone on YouTube. I don't remember their name, but anyways, it's a really cool technique. And let me show it to you here. So inside of Slice EQ, it's kind of the same. You're doing the, basically the same thing as you are with the filters in this section here that I just showed you, but you're doing it inside of Slice EQ. And this is a bit more flexible because you can create more complex um, EQ moves. So let's say I wanted to do something like this. Here I can go maybe something like way down like that and maybe like this. Right, and maybe I want another one down like this, let's say. And then let's say I want another one up here like that. And maybe not so high, maybe like this. Okay, so let's say I want that to be my EQ shape. So what I can do now is I can actually click on the offset so and modulate the offset here. So if I go like this, right? Now it's moving all of these cool filters so you can get this really interesting sound. Maybe I want to go backwards instead of up. I'm going to go down. Right? And you get this really cool sound. I really like that. I find it really interesting. So this sounds cool by itself. But then with this filter on. And what's cool about this technique is I can just grab this and I can just duplicate it. And then I can go in here and do it all over again. I can change up the EQ moves. Maybe I want this down here, this one. No, maybe I want it like this. Maybe I want this one to be like really like that. And then this one, like something like this, maybe, maybe something like that, right? And then I can do the exact same thing. And maybe instead of going down, I want this one to be going up, maybe just a little bit instead of a lot. Or maybe I do want to go down. Right, so then you get you can get all these really cool different uh, filters, complicated filters that I keep on moving. And what's also interesting is that even within the filter, you can also modulate the parameters in here. So if I wanted to, I can modulate the gain like this of each filter just a little bit. <laughs> so that they are modulating within that filter. So I'm gonna turn that one off. So maybe I want something like, oh, I want this to be, to go up, and this one maybe up as well, down a bit, and up a bit. So now it's a bit more extreme. Right, so there's a lot more that you can do. You can also modulate, you know, the cutoffs and the cues and everything else. So uh, super, super powerful. This is another thing that you can do if you want to be like super creative with filters is to use like your slice EQ to create these interesting moves to create these gunshot sounds. All right, so I think that's everything for this video. I hope you found it useful and valuable and that you can see uh, you can see the whole process from start to finish and how I think about it and how there's so much room for creativity in every like step of this process. Like everything from the start where you're creating your own samples, how you can choose whether it is just a sine wave that you're going to start with and or some complex patch or uh, which plugins you're going to put in and which, which parameters you're going to modulate, right? There's just so much... Uh, opportunity to be creative with that. And then as soon as you start importing it into your sampler, uh, what kind of filters you want to use, uh, what kind of LFO do you want to use when you're modulating the pitch and which part of the sample you're going to pick, right? So there's there's just, there's so much opportunity there uh, to be creative and to come up with different kind of sounds and different kind of gun sound effects uh, with this process. That's why I really like it because you just, you never know what you're going to get. And every time that you do it, um, you can get some really cool and interesting new sounds. So anyways, I hope you, I hope you liked it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I I always do my best to answer them. And uh, just a reminder to grab that free PDF guide, the five layering techniques guide that I put together um, to help you create better sound effects. So uh, I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.